Hey guys, welcome back to my channel Electronics Media. Today in this video, I am going to explain about integrated clock gating circuit. It is also known as latch bridge clock gating circuit. So in my last video, I have explained about the basics of clock gating. That is, what is clock gating and why the clock gating is required. So if you haven't watched that video, please go and check it out. I have given the link in the description box. So let's get started with the integrated clock gating cell. So uh, so in my uh, like you know you, uh, I have explained about the basic iron gauge uh, you know clock gating cell. Okay. So what is the iron gauge uh, iron gauge clock gating cell? So it's a uh, and a clock and we have enable and then we get a clock gated output clock which is a gated output so now this uh, and gazed and gazed, uh, clock gating circuit uh, it also uh, along with the um, you know clock gating it also does the clock chopping because of that it cannot be used extensively in the designs so now in order to overcome the you know problem that uh, the, of the clock chopping of this particular circuit so we are going for the integrated clock gating circuit it is also known as a latch based clock gating so I'm going to draw how the latch based clock gating circuit looks like. Okay, so now this will be my enable input and it goes to the D latch. Uh, okay, so now this is my enable. Now this is my clock input. And then the output of the latch will be connected to hand case. Now this is the clock, and this is the clock gated output. So now, if you uh, notice, I have put a bubble over here on this enable pin. This is my enable pin. This is the uh, D pin of the D latch. Okay. So now. Uh, uh, let's uh, first understand how this uh, you know uh, 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 you know uh, integrated clock gating cell works in terms of the you know waveforms. So this is my clock. Okay, uh, and uh, this will be my enable input. So which is like this. Okay, and uh, now uh, I have the output of this, uh, you know, enable latch. So that's a enable. I'm going to name it as a enable underscore latch. So, so what is enable latch? So we are going to consider the, uh, you know, level uh, negative level of this particular uh, this clock, and then we are going to sample the enable signal during this actual low level. So now, if you see, uh, this is uh, I'm assuming that this is value is zero over here, and then what we are doing, we are sampling the signal. So this comes out to be one, and it will remain high till the next negative level. So that comes over here. So here, at this active low again, it is continue to be one. So it will continue till this here also same, and uh, here we already sampled it. So it's a one, and it will continue, and at this wind point, right? So it's going low, so I'll be coming down low, and then this will continue over here also. It's zero, and now this will continue uh, since already at this till here we sampled a uh, low. Uh, I mean, at this um, active low, we are sampling this enable signal as low. So right, that's why it will continue, and then over here, what happens? My enable signal is one, so it will be one. Okay, and then it's. Uh, Stays high for a while, so it continues. Okay, so now what happens is uh, the output of the uh, you know uh, the AND gate, right? So output of the AND gate will be that's a clock gated output will be simply AND of this enable latch and it is this clock. Okay, so now here it's a uh, my uh, uh, enable uh, latch is one, so I'll be sampling the signal over here. So my clock is zero, so it will be zero. Over here it becomes one. So my output is one. Right, just like this, it's you know sampling the clock. So here, right? So then this uh, enable has signal go has gone low, so it will be zero till here. Okay. So here also the clock is zero, so it will continue, and then from here it's a and this continues. If there is a clock, right, it continues like this. So now uh, what we observe from here is. 
this clock gated output is uh, you know uh, it is uh, you know uh, it's not uh, it doesn't have the clock chop i mean meaning that there is no alteration of the pulse width of this uh, you know clock gated output so this is free from uh, from glitches okay there is no glitch that are present and also uh, it doesn't have uh, doesn't have clock chop problem Okay, so it, uh, the clock is uh, it, it is not chopped off. So this uh, circuit, right, the, the integrated clock heating circuit, you can use it for your actual practical purposes of the clock heating cell. Okay, and it also it is known as a that's why it's known as an integrated clock heating circuit. Now, um, how do we write a Verilog code for this? I'm just going to write that right now, so so that you will understand what actually the Verilog code looks like. So now, what do we have? This is a fine. always underscore com. Okay, and then we we'll write it as begin. So now, uh, since it's a latch, so what I will is it doesn't depend on the positive or the negative of the clock, but it just uh, depends on the level sensitivity, right? So I'm going to write this if for not of clock, then uh, enable underscore latch equals to that enable so we are going to sample the enable signal only when there is a the act to low value of the clock okay and then uh, this is my end statement over here and then what i will do my clock gated output we should be it's equal to the enable underscore latch and then with the my uh, clock signal itself so this is your clock gated output so uh, i hope this uh, information is clear and uh, uh, if you have any further questions related to this integrated clock gating cell or it's also known as a latch based clock gating please do let me know in the comment section i will happy i will be happy to answer the questions thank you